Malachi chapter 2. Um, we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 4. Um, amen. Uh, of course, you have your uh, study sheet, your printout. Amen. It has a scripture on it as well as scripture will be on the screen. Amen. Today we want to talk about the just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 beginning verse 1 says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. May God add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. In the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk is only three chapters long. In the first chapter, amen, Habakkuk asked two questions of God. Amen. He asked two questions of God. He asked, why does evil in Judah go unpunished? He asked, why in evil, why does evil in Judah go unpunished? unpunished. And he also asks, how can a just God use a wicked nation like Babylon to punish his chosen people? Amen. Amen. And, and if we look at our lives right now, if we look at the situation, the times that we live in, it seems like evil is ever present. Not only is evil ever present, it seems to be increasing. Amen. Not just the magnitude or the amount of evil, but the persistence of evil all around us. And if we can ask the same question, why does it seem like evil goes unnoticed? punished? Why does it seem like that those who are uh, live lives contrary to God's ways. Why does it seem like they are prospering? Amen. Yeah. Uh, why uh, does, 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 does God allow uh, wicked nations uh, to punish his chosen people? Amen. And the, the, day, which in this, the day in which this is written, amen, uh, Babylon is uh, ultimately preparing to conquer, amen, Judah and Jerusalem where Habakkuk is. Amen. And God has already told him that this is going to happen. And, and so why would God use a wicked nation like Babylon to punish his people? Amen. And the reality is, amen, there, there's going to be some, some wickedness that's going to come on the shores of the United States eventually. Amen. I don't know how soon that's going to be, but I believe that it is right around the corner. Amen. Because, yeah. uh, amen, uh, the United States through his history has been a Christian nation. Amen. We haven't been a perfect Christian nation. Amen. Yeah. Because we have done evil to other nations. But God is, is, is allowing uh, evil nations, evil organizations to come against the United States. And that is a reality. Amen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I believe it's right around the corner. Amen. So Habakkuk asked these ultimately two questions in chapter 1. And then we begin here in chapter 2 where he decides he's going to sit and wait for God's answer. Amen. And God's ultimate answer is don't you worry about the evil. Don't you worry about those who practice evil. Don't you worry about what I'm doing. He says simply the just shall live by his faith. Amen. And when we put our faith in God, our faith in God should guide our lives. Amen. It should guide our lives, the decisions that we make in our lives, what we do with our time, what we do with our, our treasure, what we do with our talent should be guided by the faith that we profess to have in the one and only true living God. So there's four points that I want to share from these four verses. If you'll walk with me for a minute. Amen. Uh, first of all, your faith is defined by your actions. Your faith is is defined by your actions. For faith without works is dead. Amen. Faith without works is dead. Verse 1 says, I will stand my watch. 
I will set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he, talking about God, what God will say to me and, and what I will answer when I am corrected. He goes to God with these questions and he, he, he believes that God is going to correct him for even asking these questions. Uh, but the truth is that God doesn't mind our questions. Amen. Amen. We may not necessarily get the answer we want or the answer we desire or he may not answer the question directly or in the time that we uh, think he should. Amen. But God is not afraid of our questions. Amen. Habakkuk eagerly waited for God's response to his questions. Amen. He says, I, he says when I am corrected, uh, and this expresses his submission to God. Amen. So he believes that God is going to give an answer because he believes that God is going to the answer. He, he answer his questions. Amen. He positions himself and waits for God to do just what he believed God will do. Amen. And so his actions are based upon the faith that he has. And he says, when I am corrected, again, this, is exp this expresses his submission to God. Yeah. Amen. He's waiting for God to uh, correct him. Amen. For asking those crazy questions. Amen. Amen. And so our faith is defined by our actions. What we do with our faith or what we do according to our faith defines our faith. Amen. Uh, the validity or the authenticity of the faith that we profess is validified or verified in what we do. Amen. So if I believe that God is, as we sung earlier, if God has a blessing for me, then I have to position myself to receive the blessing that I believe, confess, or have faith in that he has for me. Amen. And how can I receive the blessings of God if I'm not walking according to God's ways? Are you with me, church? And so the expectation is, is that I need to be in a place where I can receive the word of God and the blessings of God in the time of God. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let, let's, let's move on. Amen. I ain't going to stay there too long. But we know in the book of James, James said faith without works is dead. Yeah. Amen. He, he's talking about our faith being li uh, alive. Uh, he's talking about living faith. He's talking about active faith. Amen. He's talking about our faith doing something. Faith doesn't just exist. Faith does. Amen. Amen. Faith doesn't just exist. Faith does something. Amen. How can I say I'm believing God for a better job, but I'm not putting in no application nowhere? Amen. How, how can I say that I, I'm believing that God would prosper me with, with money, but I'm not learning how to handle the money I got? Amen. Amen. So, so actions uh, correspond to the faith that I profess. And so our faith is defined by our actions. Secondly, church, we must take ownership of the vision. We must take ownership of the vision. Verse 2 says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he, um, uh, that he may run who reads it. Amen. M m write the vision, make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. The thing is that others were to read the vision of Habakkuk and warn the people. Amen. That coming, that judgment is coming Amen. to Judah. Yes. Amen. Judgment is coming to the wicked. So the God tells Habakkuk to write the vision, make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. In order to make it plain, it has to be understandable. Amen. God's judgment on a Judah that is coming, that he tells Habakkuk about, that is supposed to be shared with others, has to be understandable. Amen. And so the, 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 the vision uh, that is set before Habakkuk has to be taken ownership of, not only by Habakkuk, but those who are to carry the message. Are you with me, church? It says that he may run who reads it. They have to take charge of what is received by them. 
And this is what God does to the church today. Amen. He has given us a written revelation of himself yes. called the Bible. Yes. And he made it understandable so that we can comprehend his intent and plan of salvation for mankind. And because it's understandable, we ought to take ownership of what he has given to us and take charge of it as we go deliver the message to the world. Are you with me, church? Amen. So you have to take ownership of the vision just as if it was your own this is why God says uh, that uh, well, well Paul writes to the church at Corinthian that a steward must be found faithful amen a steward has been given charge over something that belongs to somebody else yeah. amen the Bible is not my revelation about God. The, the Bible is God's revelation about himself. Yeah. He remains and, retain, and, and retains ownership. And all I'm doing as a steward is relaying his message. Yeah. It's not my message. I didn't come up with it. Amen. Amen. But God has a plan for mankind. If only we will receive the message that is sent. So we have to take ownership of it. Amen. We have to take ownership of it. And, and thirdly, church, your destiny is not determined by your present circumstances. Amen. Your destiny is not determined by your present circumstances. God continues in verse 3, he says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. The vision is for an appointed time. It, it, an appointed time means it's not yet. But the time has been designed by God. Amen. It's an appointed time. Amen. So the judgment that God uh, tells Habakkuk that is coming on the land of Judah is for an appointed time. It's a time that I have designed is what God is saying. Amen. It's an appointed time. He says it will not lie. It, it, it will not lie. This means that it is that it exists, but it is not yet proven. Amen. That, that's the definition for faith. It exists, but it is not yet proven. God said the judgment is coming, but the judgment is not here yet. But because, because God said it was coming, it's coming. We have to believe that it is coming. It exists because God has spoken it into existence. It's coming, but it has not yet been proven. Amen. It will be proven when it has come. Amen. So when God pro pronounces judgment on Judah, they can choose, after hearing the message, they can choose to put their faith in what God has said or to deny what God has said and live like the message don't even exist. This is our choice. Amen. And so our destiny is not determined by our present circumstances. Though it tarries. 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. We do not look at the things which are seen because what we see is temporary. Amen. What we are going through is temporary. Amen. Amen. Why the wicked are prospering is temporary. Amen. Why evil is increasing around us is temporary. But we don't look at the temporary. Amen. We look at the things that are eternal. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 3, by faith we understand that the world, uh, the worlds were formed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Amen. And so our destiny is not determined by our present circumstances. There is more to life than this. 
There is more to life than what we are going through right now. Amen. God has a better design. God has a better plan for us than what we may experience right now. Because the truth of the matter is now we, we as saved people can have the, a, a proper perspective and, and look at life and see the, the majesty of God at work and see his love, his grace and his mercy. But, yo, but, but as we walk in this flesh, we still experience the evil that this life brings upon us. Some of it we bring on ourselves and some of it just happens to us. Amen. 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 Some of it we bring on ourselves and some of it just happens to us. But whether we bring it on ourselves or whether it just happens to us, we still have to deal with what life puts before us. Yeah. But we have to understand that God's destiny, his plan for us is not determined by what we see right now. Because there is more to life than what we are experiencing right now. Amen. Amen. Now, I can look at my life and realize that God has brought me a mighty long way. But God is not through with me yet. There is still more to life than what I'm experiencing right now. Amen. And so our destiny is not determined by our present circumstances. We can't simply look at what's going on in our life right now and conclude that it's going to always be like that. What you are going through, what you experience is temporary because there will come a day. Amen. When you won't have to deal with it no more. Amen. Amen. There is coming a day. The struggles that we endure, the, the pain and suffering that we have to deal with, there is coming a day. So our destiny is not determined by our present circumstances. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with. Amen. But, but, but realize that God's plan for you is greater than what you're experiencing right now. Amen. Amen. And so fourthly, I won't even be long this morning. Take Amen. Take my time. <laughs> Amen. Y'all going to have to start putting some duct tape over Brother Kerry's mouth or something. Amen. 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 <laughs> Pastor just said this morning uh, that, that, that I, I, I become long winded. <laughs> Amen. And now Brother Kerry want me to take extra time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Fourthly, your destiny is determined by the reality of your tomorrow. Amen. Your destiny is determined by the reality of your tomorrow. Verse 4 says, Behold the proud. Look at the proud. Look at those who practice evil. Look at those who seem to be prospering, doing wicked. His soul is not upright in him. But, amen, that, 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 that transition uh, word, but, it, it, and, and Lord Jesus kids, he uses this against me all the time. So I have to rephrase my, my uh, statements to her sometimes and <laughs> take the but out. Amen. Because you can say, um, I love you, but, and, and that but just means cancel out what I said before. It. What comes after it is what really matters. Amen. I love you, but. Amen. And so, so uh, um, verse 4 says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but, amen, what comes before it is not important. Habakkuk, don't worry about the evildoers. Don't worry about the evil that surrounds you. Amen. What, what really matters is what comes after the but. The just shall live by his faith. Amen. amen. The just shall live by his faith. The power of your faith is not about what is, it's about what could be. Amen? Amen. The power of your faith is not about what is, it's about what could be. The possibilities that we have in Christ should cause us to look beyond our present lives. Amen. And believe that God has something greater in store for us. Amen. Amen. And our faith 
again, is not in what we see, not what we experience right now. It's what can be, what could be, what will be. And if our faith is in God, then we have to hold on to his promises. Amen. We have to hold on to his promises. We have not experienced his promises because if we have, then we wouldn't have to put faith in them. But because God has said it, it is a future reality that we can hold on to. Amen. And so our destiny is determined by the reality of our tomorrow. Amen. We know that God has more in store for us. Amen. He has a better life. He has a better plan for us in eternity with him. Amen. And so it's a reality by faith. Amen. Yeah. Hmm. But God tells Habakkuk, he says, the just shall live by his faith. Amen. The ones who have placed their faith in the God, amen, the eternal God, as we as Christians place our faith in Jesus Christ, who I am is in Christ. All I will ever be is in Christ. God's plan for me is in Christ. Amen. And the reality of my tomorrow is in Christ. The just, those who have been justified, amen, uh, our lives as believers have been justified. I may still sin, I may still fall short, but placing my faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of my sins, amen, God now declares me righteous. Yeah. Amen. And so the faith that I have in him is the faith that should guide my life. And so I live, I walk, I move, I have my being in faith. Amen. I live by faith. So the Bible says the just shall live by faith. So we can't be worried. Amen. About what's going on around us. We can't let that hold us down. We can't let it hold us back. Because God has a greater plan for our lives. No matter how bad life seems to get, no matter what is thrown your way as a child of God, God has something better in store for your life. And you have to keep walking, believing, holding on to the promises of God, amen, because they will become to fruition in the future. Amen. So what you are experiencing right now is temporary. It will pass one day. But until then, continue to walk by faith yeah. as we stand today. You know, God is not afraid of our questions. Amen. Amen. Because we don't have all the answers so we have to ask questions why is this happening why am I going through this why am I having to deal with this why are people who seem to do wrong living so well God is not afraid of our questions but at the end of the day as we wait for God to answer and give us an answer we have to continue walking by faith Amen. Don't give so much attention to what's going on around you and what you have to deal with. Yeah, you have to deal with it, but don't let that consume you that you're not doing what God has called you to do. Amen. Because at the end of the day, what you're going through won't matter in the end. What matters is your life living according to the word of God. Amen. And as we live according to the word of God, God blesses us. There's benefits. Amen. Amen. And even if he doesn't give us what we're asking for. Amen. We have to have the mindset and the pop proper perspective to see that God's will for our lives, even though we may not fully understand it. Amen. But his will for our lives is perfect. Amen. There's nothing wrong with it. 
This is why Paul can say in the book of Romans, Romans 8, 28, for we know we have a working knowledge. We know that all things work to the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All things, the good, the bad, the ugly that we endure in this life will work to our good. Amen. And even what we go through, ultimately, it is a testimony to the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Even when God doesn't give you the answers, God is still with you. And you ain't losing your mind because this world is going crazy. Amen. You still have a proper perspective and understand that God is in control, even if I'm going through this mess. Yeah. And so we have to live our life by faith in the one and only God. Amen. We have to live our faith, uh, live out our life in faith in his son. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because in him it, it, it is, Lord, is where our tomorrow, God's plan is going to happen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just come today, Lord, giving you all.